I say get fit, <clears throat> get mobile, exercise, <clears throat> get your sweat on, <clears throat> work hard, play hard, work harder, keep it going, come up, one more rep, ah! oh. <sighs> wow. oh. that was I'm ready, I'm ready, <laughs> <laughs> let's do it. Okay. Hello wonderful people, how's it going? And welcome to Expressions of Happiness with myself, Will Brocklebank, and David Hart. David Hart, baby. Yes. yes. Episode one, man. We're in. We're in the inaugural episode. The, oh, well, you know, following on from that little introduction, it, it got me got me spurred on mm-hmm. even more, to be honest. I'm ready. I'm ready to jump into this. I'm ready. And really, what better way to start, considering I'm a PE teacher, considering that you have... Um, You've, you've got this this found passion for it as well. Our first topic of expressions of happiness is around exercise. Exercise, man. That you mean it's it's going to be a never ending topic. Somehow we're going to have to contain this within a within an actual reasonable amount of time because yeah. I could probably talk about this all day. I imagine you could all day. Yeah, but you know that's all right. We can we we can we can we can find our way. We can find our path. I think. But before we jump into that that particular topic, there's a couple of things that we want to talk about. Mm-hmm. First of all, it is my responsibility today to have a little look into some positive news. And I'm starting local. I'm starting local, David, because, you know, I had someone on the the podcast a little while ago from from Edge Recovery Cafe. Um, And again, you know, if you haven't seen that podcast, I I really recommend that you go and go and check it out just to to see the amazing work they do to to support one, the, the just the wider local community, but also people who are struggling with some form of um, addiction or they're trying to sort of move past that in in their lives and they they have a a space down on on mill road which is edge recovery cafe you know pref, um appropriately named um and it's been a, a staple it's been around for for a while now and there's a really strong team that's there but i did catch wind the other day that edge recovery cafe is opening a second cafe really oh buddy yes now this i believe is in all born i really wish oh, i'd okay. kept the um oh no i am right so it's at full born it's at the uh full born hospital site and it's open to staff patients and the general public so i imagine in this context it's, it's focusing in on the cafe element and then i imagine over time they will be able to to, to grow it and extend it in the same way that they've been able to on on mill road so a, a massive massive shout out to uh, to Edge Recovery Cafe for all the work that you do and the and the, really the deserved deserved growth and expansion of of the services that you provide. So, yeah, I think a, I think a worthwhile positive news story to, oh, to start with that's today. Great. That's really good news. Yeah, yeah, I'm oh. glad that they're able to expand their remit and you know uh, help more people. Yeah, ultimately, exactly. Yeah. You know, it, and I I learned so much from from the from uh the from from gail and 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 just every time i've been there it's been amazing and and you know that podcast specifically i really learned a lot about you know the the impact of of local community because that is the real example there is that you know on on a national scale they might not be known or seen on you know really to the to the right degree but you know getting to chat to them one-to-one really really special really Mm -hmm. special yeah you've got to think micro before you go macro Good work. Exercise pun too. I, I, yeah, uh, I was, I, I that wasn't that intended. No, no, but God, that was smart. Thank you. <laughs> uh, so, uh, alongside that, we spoke about, uh, enjoying non-alcoholic beverages Woo! and we're going to start off with a Brooklyn brewery special here. Uh, it's called special effects. Um, if you can't see, it has very funky, very mo- mo- mosaic mosaic esque, mm. um, yeah. They're a br- I, I I did look it up. They're a Brooklyn Brooklyn. God, I can't even say Brooklyn. <laughs> they're a Brooklyn based brewery, mm-hmm. but I think you mentioned as well that now we're in collaboration with Carlsberg. Um, but I think they do the distribution, Carlsberg, right? But the brewing still happens in Brooklyn. I believe okay. I could be wrong. Yeah. Um. So and, and the ca- and the case with a lot of these as well, right? Is that it's like. There, it's like 0.4 percent level of alcohol so in th- but i mean the, the context that i'd give for that is that it, you know when i bought it from the shop it doesn't come up with like a a need for an id or anything like that so i'm mm-hmm. guessing it's uh the low one of the lowest levels that you can get mm-hmm. so 
Yeah, well, should we give it a try? Yes, let's do it. Yes. Please. Um, okay, I'm gonna let me grab this little bad boy. Oh, excuse me, whilst I. It's all about the pop. Yeah, really. Oh, did you hear that? Oh, I nailed it. Truly. Here you go, good sir. Come here. Oh, 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 uh, oh. <laughs> oh. Stretch it. Yeah. Okay, we're in. We're in. Here we go. Let's get up. Can okay. you get the pop? <laughs> well, the fall down wasn't great, but you know the, the initial pop, the AS, ASMR, is that, is that what it's called? Yeah. All right. Well, we can't quite reach each other, well, but let's do it. Uh, yeah. Chinny chin. Chinny chin. Chinny chin. Oh, that's okay. That's okay. floral. Yeah, that was about to say it wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't what I was expecting. <laughs> It really was not what I was expecting. No, I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying I dislike that. No, it's good. I mean, if you're a fan of floral beers. Yeah, well, it's just that you get, I would say you get that initial like classic beer taste from in, in the first instance. And then you, when you then have a little bit of time to. to the thing to is, like, like all of these non-alcoholic brands, if you handed me this beer and I didn't you, know. Oh, I, I, I wouldn't, wouldn't no, question it. No, I, I completely agree. I would have liked them to have a little... Um, I would like a little description on there. I would like a description just yeah. to give me a bit of context to that. But yeah. nonetheless, nonetheless, it was a satisfying first. And we've got we've got a couple each yep. that we can enjoy we through can. the podcast. Um, yeah, good choice. Good to, good start. Good start. I yep. was a little concerned. I was concerned. I didn't know what we were going to get. But anyway, I think it's time to jump into into the meaty stuff, into the bulk. Let's do it. Yeah. So I think, you know, although obviously I've mentioned I'm a PE teacher, I think it's worth us just starting off with sort of just contextualizing um, a little bit for, for both of us and, and our relationships with, with, with exercise. So, you know, in the context of myself, I've, I've always been a, a big, big lover of, of sport. It's, it's something that I grew up with. It, all of my family are, are sporty. My dad was uh, rugby. Sister was like netball and basketball. Um, mum was netball and then a bit of tennis as well. And then I sort of flitted between uh, basketball, football and tennis when I was growing up. Um, but my focuses have sort of swapped and changed as, as time has gone on, which we'll talk about later. And then obviously... You, you, you tie that in with the fact that I'm a, I'm a PE teacher. You know, I surround myself with with exercise and, and elements of physical activity and sport pretty much all the time. So, you know, I've, I've got a, a, at least a little bit of insider knowledge of, of the, the growth of, of exercise at, at, at different age groups, especially with things I do with, with serotonin as well, working in the community. So, you know, I've, I've got some some great things to, to, to say about it. But also there's some there's some points of contention for sure. Yeah, sure. We can we can explore that as well. No, um, no, no we're gonna, that's a no, that's a no go zone. No, this is straight line. Sure. Straight line. Okay, <laughs> we're going to avoid that. <laughs> um, yeah. So yes, my background. Uh, I've was dancing from five years old, from five to about thirteen. This guy has got moves. Uh, he has I, got. Moves. I can move hip. I can move my hips. I think hip hip, hip movement's key. It is. You can move I, I, I look it like gives you the illusion that you can dance when actually you can't dance. Anyway. Oh, that's a, that's the, agree to disagree on that okay, one. But anyway. Okay. Um, but uh, ultimately that was inspired by my siblings. They were both dancers as well. Um, and being in that environment, I was naturally inclined to do that. And I think the, the tandem between music and movement uh, really connected with me because music means a lot to me too. Uh, and then, much like yourself, I think I went, I went through the whole gamut of uh, sports that you could think of. I tried badminton, I tried rugby, I tried football, I tried um, just a whole host of sports. Basketball, if you would believe it. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't great. Actually, so your team... For, for, yeah. the, for, for, the, uh, for the audience, Dave is three foot six, so that yeah. is relatively surprising. I'm standing <laughs> right now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, and then I kind of went through a brief period where exercise just didn't interest me. I just felt really uninspired. And then once I'd left school, I reconnected with it through climbing. So I started climbing for about five years. Um, and now my journey has taken a new path mm. as well. Which we'll, we'll uh, definitely dive which into. Which we'll dive into as well. Um, yeah. But ultimately, exercise means a lot to me on many different levels 
Mm. Um, well, I, th I think that's then the thing to, to recognize off the bat, isn't it, really, that, you know, you're talking to two people or you're listening to two people that have, um, you know, an enjoyment and exercise. But even within that, you know, both of us have gone through our, our changes and feelings of, of certain elements of, 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 of the way in which we exercise. So, mm. you know, when you contextualize it that way, there's many people that, that are not exercising whatsoever. Um, and actually that brings me to some of the first, some of the first bits that I came across when I was sort of doing some preparation for, for, for this podcast. Um, and actually I was inspired by it, by some of the, some of the work that I was doing, it, uh, for, for my GCSE PE class. I, uh, came across the active life survey or active lives survey, uh, which is published by UK sport. And this one was focused around, um, 2020 to 2021, Obviously, well, this was then published in April 22. So you're not going to get much more recent than that. You, you'll get something maybe in the in the coming year or something like that. But um, in in this survey, they, they 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 went across, you know, millions and millions of people, millions of people to, to get a, a general consensus of, of, you know, how active um, people are. And this this first little bit is sort of focused in and around more uh, an, an adult level. So I think it's from 18 years above. And then obviously, you can look at it on a different age, age range in those uh, variants. But um, in relation to um, sort of recommendations from the government, it's normally around 150 minutes a week is what you should be intending to try and exercise that can also go up, it depends on the uh, the the level of intensity that you're doing in each piece of exercise right um but there is currently and this is uk obviously specific 61 percent 61.4 percent of people get an average of 150 minutes a week and that was um you know 28 million worth of um of individuals that, that involved themselves in 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 the, in the survey or certainly what represented this percentage or quartile um for people who were fairly accurate, so this is for 30 to 149 minutes a week, that was 11.5%. Um, so that was 5.2 million, but didn't re reach the average. And then currently there is 27.2% um, of the population or of the people that were surveyed that, that get um, less than 30 minutes a week. So on a, mm -hmm. on a you know, obviously a, a very low amount, which, you know, when you when you look at certain trends unfortunately that's that is still quite a a significant issue you know it's it's something that um many different initiatives and and um governmental elements and local elements have, have been working really hard to try and sort of change that um change that trend from happening and really get as many people active as possible but the reality is exercise is still not liked by a massive percentage of people right and i think that's something that has to be recognized yeah, why do you why do you think that is maybe? Why do you think that exercise has become so unsavory an idea for a lot of different people? Speaking from your your mm. background. Yeah, well I mean it's it, I mean it's it's an absolute multitude of factors. Like for some for some elements of people it's 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 not even that they don't want to it's that they just physically don't even have the time, right? So it depends on what your socioeconomic status is, you know, what um your your work arrangements are, what what the case is with your family, it might be to do with your your ability or disability that, that that's there. Um but if you think about maybe someone that is able bodied, someone that has the full length of time that that, that they could so they could involve themselves in and you know we, we take we talk about an ideal scenario um well for, for young people obviously they're they're growing up with with a change in in technology um they're, they're growing up with maybe a change of priorities in 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 their daily life you know if you think about you know even when we were growing up there, there wasn't um there wasn't access to to, to massive uh, social media platforms or to you know x y and z that, that now is in, in existence so we had to sort of fill that time in in different ways so even mm. people who um weren't necessarily engaged in maybe like you know very structured sport and that's the thing right we're talking about exercise here we're not talking about okay you need to go out and play for a team right it's yeah. it's, it's more just involvement in exercise but certainly younger people would be just out and about playing, climbing trees, going to the park, going and seeing their friends. And again, you, you, it's not to deny that that isn't still in place um, and that isn't still happening. But um, I think that there, as a starting point, there are influences that encourage you to do other things rather than keep yourself active, certainly. 
Yeah, I think, yeah, I think you made an important point there about the, a role that exercise takes, the identity of exercise. As you say, that as soon as you, as soon as you say the word to people, I think they think either stru- structured sport, you know, uh, whether that be um, rugby or basketball, yeah, yeah. any, any, you know, or they're thinking, um, you know, gyms, uh, you know, with, with dumbbells and, you know, running endlessly on a treadmill. They don't think about, you know, the kind of childlike nature of, of exercise um, where you're, you're, you're doing it just for the sake of, uh, it's more explorative, isn't it? It's more kind of a curious space to exist in. Um, and it still exacts the same benefits that you would get if you were participating in structured exercise. Yeah, um, well, if you th- if you think about it, well, well, I, I, well, let me pose this as a question. Um, in in this same survey, they they look at the changes in um, activities that are taken part in at least um, twice a week, and this is for people who are above the age of sixteen. Um, what do you think is the activity that people have engaged in that has seen the biggest growth in in participation in and remember we, we're going on the context that it's not just sport it is mm-hmm. any variation of what could be exercise uh running walking 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 yeah so since um yes yeah, so, it's so, so since um november 20 to November 2021, there has been a 2.4 million individual increase in the number of people that are now walking for leisure. And, you know, I mean, instantly I go to think of like COVID and and the the limitations and what people could do. Mm. Um, But, you know, that that has a massively upward trend. But all other ones that I've looked at in this survey, so they've got active travel, fitness activities, running, cycling for leisure and sport, swimming and team sports. Every single one of those is on a downward trajectory. Wow. There are less people involving themselves in those activities than there were um, even a year ago. So for, uh, I think it's the only one I'm looking at is the active travel, fitness activities um, and cycling had a little bit of an upward trend. But since 2015, nearly every single one of them have been on a downward trend. There's less people involving themselves in those activities. Do you, oh God, I mean, you know, to save myself from going down a rabbit hole here, but, um, you know, it could be the uh, interference or the just, or just the changes in society, right? You know, the infrastructural changes that we're seeing, um, you know, the convenience that we have, um, you know, everything's easily accessible. Um, and it's kind of become, um, you know, when I think, I think when exercise becomes overly prescriptive, um, then people are far less, uh, in- incentivized to do it. It needs to, it needs to stretch beyond. Um, and of course, you know, all the benefits that you get from exercise are, are truly really important. Um, yeah, which will really and, and we will go into, yeah. but you know, it's exercise needs to have a, a deeper meaning, a deeper practice. It can't be extrinsic. Yeah, it can't yeah. be extrinsic. Hundred, hundred percent agree. Which is probably why you're seeing these, or you know, we're seeing these these steep declines in. I think um, I think there's always a permanent sense of of of, of a society trying to rediscover. Um, what it is that they want to do and, and the ways in which they want to exercise. And you, you, you know, on a natural level, you always see like a change in trends of, of different activities and participation levels. But I just found it really fascinating that in all of those areas that there was, the, there was the downwards trend. I just couldn't, I couldn't believe it. But you know, if I, if I, you know, coming back to that sense of, of, of structure and the impact of structure, you know, I'm, I'm very, very fortunate to work in a, um, in a, in a PE department that has from, from the moment that I joined, you know, been really engaged in the idea of, of creating a, a, a curriculum, which is, you know, really centered around engagement rather than going, okay, right. Well, we're just going to do football for eight weeks and then we're going to do rugby for eight weeks or we're going to do netball for whatever it is. Right. We, we've really tried to, to, to look for, for ways in which we can engage children in, in exercise um, that, that is in, that we, that they find interesting and, you know, even then, 
even then when you when you present that to them you know and we take feedback we do surveys to find out what they want what they want to change still in some cases it just does not matter you know mm. they will they will just openly come to you and say i i don't see the value in this i don't see the point in this and i'm you know when i leave i'm not going to do anything to do with it which you know maybe says a lot about the trends that maybe happen over over time but that does actually lead me to a point that i wanted to to ask you what what was your experience of pe like um it altered between the time that I was at middle school to the time that I was upper school. Um, middle school, I was still quite engaged with, with sport. Um, and then for some reason, and again, this, this could have been something, you know, um, beyond the remit of the teachers themselves in this upper school. Um, but I just, I just, I just felt disengaged. I felt a little bit disempowered. Like I didn't, I didn't want to include myself. Um, and I think mainly at the, my resistance to it was, I mean, was probably in part of just, you know, my whole anti-establishment uh, position, you know. Um, but I just, yeah, I think I think you could sense, I think you could sense a stress um, and a, a, a kind of a, a, a weariness in the teachers where it, it felt as though they were trying to, control the class rather than uh being able to truly engage with everybody mm. um and I, I could be a fault of the teacher it could be a fault of the children it could be i mean there's lots of overlapping um, I, I, factors i i think that's a, a a really powerful reflection because that is that is the question i ask myself sometimes you know the do, Again, naturally, you, you you're going to have different classes. You have to work very hard to to, to structure those classes um, so that it maximizes participation for everyone, right? But I I, I come out of some lessons and I'm like, did 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 I, did I even really put across the point of the the value of exercise there, or was I just engaged in a in a in a task of simply controlling thirty kids so that you know they don't kill each other at certain points? Honestly. Mm. Um, yeah, and and again, the reason I ask your opinion of that is that it, I think it is reflected in the feelings of of many many people um, in in previous years. Again, you really think about stereotypical PE. You talk about the PE teachers who just didn't, who just didn't give a shit. Basically, they they weren't there for for the mass. They were there for those that could win them like a trophy or something at the end of the year. And we and we even did a, a little sort of um, uh, mini sort of literally show of hands sort of survey with uh with with teachers when we did like this thing for for all staff like the PE teachers stood up and we sort of introduced our subject right and the volume of people that said that their experience of exercise or PE at that time was th that it was negative was astounding it was it was massive so it sort of sets up this this future impact of you know well my experience of exercise came in the form of PE I hated it and now I'm going to do everything I can to avoid it. And then passing that same feeling, that same sensation back to their own children. And it creates this self-fulfilling prophecy in, in, in so many regards. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree. Actually to, to, to further your point, um, I found an article uh, by the Washington post by a guy called Daniel Lieberman, who's an expert in human evolutionary biology and uh, he did a paper called Is Exercise Really Medicine? Uh, the main premise being that um, our ancestors were more concerned with conserving energy and only using that energy uh, to hunt and gather. So it's more a survivalist tactic. Um, so the, our, our ability to exercise or our motivation to do so is still very much entangled and interwoven with those survivalist uh, behaviors. Um, so it makes it much more difficult for some. So maybe you have some outliers where people have formulated a different connection with exercise and they're able to push aside that uh, um, imposition to, to exercise. Um, and of course, this is a working theory. There are people that dis, you know discredit this and say that it's not true. Um, but he does go on to say that uh, people that had a negative experience with physical activity when they were younger 
uh, such as being picked last for a team, uh, tended to exercise less than who, those who didn't have that experience. And as you said, that sense of maybe shame, humiliation, um, you know, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a brutal time for some people, really, really difficult. And when they're, when they're being asked to do something they feel really uncomfortable doing, um, as you say, it sets a, a, an unhealthy precedent for them in the future where every time they go out and exercise, they're probably thinking, who's looking at me? Who's, who's judging me, you know? Um, and you, you, you combine that in with um, the impact of just being a, a child, right? Someone that's, someone that's still coming to understand their emotions, their feelings, and, and the way in which they approach a given situation. And again, you know, you see certainly in, in um, some of the mixed classes, it, you know, what you are describing is literally said word for word from from some students. And, you know, the, they can't in the same way as learning a, um, you know, a, a subject which is, is which is classroom based. They feel so much more on show that, you know, they're almost unwilling to fail in front of others because they you know it, it it feels like okay well from a social perspective you know that's going to absolutely destroy me mm. and and you know there's, there's such a a negative impact that can happen there but this is the thing though you know you you've got these these sources these issues of 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 um disconnect that form in exercise when when we're younger um but the reality is, you know, again, looking on the on the World Health um, Organization website, physical inactivity is one of the leading risk factors um, in in disease and um, in disease mortality. So, people who are insufficiently active have a twenty to thirty percent increased risk death uh, risk of death in comparison to those that are sufficiently active. So, you know, even though even though you've got this 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 percentile this this element of of our society which which really really dislikes um exercise i think it is just continuously such a a, a pivotal such a vital thing for us to continue to to explore and 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 find ways in which we can get people to to be active mm -hmm. and you know sort of maybe leaving uh well just maybe the last little touch on your maybe your own school experience you might not even be able to pick it out but what do you think would have changed your experience of of physical education? What were you looking for when you first or when you were in your PE lessons? What what did you want to experience from it? I think, and again, this is probably so difficult to do in those environments because, you know, essentially you're, you're having to manage so much expectation and so much individuality that how do you meaningfully distill that? And I think that's probably what I needed. I needed I needed some sort of um, people to be more personable, connect with me on a more human way. Um, because actually what I realize now is that, you know, exercise plays such a pivotal role um, and formulates a big part of my identity. Um, but the way that I viewed it back then was that people that do sports, are a particular kind of person and I'm not that kind of person. So therefore I'm going to willfully disobey and remove myself from the situation. Um, whereas had it been explained to me that, uh, you know, the exercise can, um, can be identified in a more meaningful way um, and does have a sense of connection, um, I think I would have engaged a lot more well, and that my reflection on school is obviously, you know, my, my background is sport. So the the lessons themselves were, oh, well, they were geared to someone like me. So, you know, for me, my experience of PE was really positive. Um, but, you know, if I even think about the way in which that was geared, you know, really, really sport driven, really sport orientated, right? Let's get into clubs that start playing for teams that start doing X, Y, and Z, right? And I went down that whole pathway. I played for teams for basketball, football, and, um, and for tennis. But the reality is for, for, for me, then as I've gotten older, you know, I still really, really enjoy being involved in those things, but I enjoy being involved in those things in different ways and for different purposes, you know, it's no longer about, okay, well, how far can I take this? How, how, 
high up in a league can I or how high up a league can I play? Actually, it's more about, well, I really enjoy playing those sports and I just want opportunities to just to have a bit of fun with 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 friends or, or meet new people. And I, I think that's a really nice way for us to, to step into, you know, the impact of exercise on health. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and you know, have you, have you did you write down a definition for health? I think I think you did. Uh, yeah. So this again is defined by the World Health Organization uh, as physical, mental, and social well-being, not merely the absence of disease and or infirmity. infirmity. Or infirmity. Yeah. Still in the head, baby. Great word. Beautiful word. Oh, beautiful. Um. Yes. So it has a kind of um. There's a lot of moving parts when it comes to health, um. As you say, but the the physical benefits and the mental benefits you get from um, exercise cannot be understated. Just from my own personal experience, oh, you know, um, I I really do feel. I think it's one of those things that if you could if you could give some if you took um, an individual who doesn't exercise at all and perhaps is ridden with um, riddle riddled with ailments and they have migraines and headaches and they're foggy and you know their 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 body and their brain is is not operational or optimal i wish and by no means am i exemplary in this case but i wish i could give them some of and just to, just so they can get a, a brief moment to, to to view life through that lens because because when i exercise and i know if, if i if i don't exercise on a regular basis that um, I can I can feel I can perceive those those differences, and they they are demonstrable. They're noticeable. Um, just like you know the improved clarity, um, my ability to think more sharply and clearly, my mobility, um, you know, and it, it's just yeah, it's oh, it's well, it's endless. It's endless. It's, it's it endless. is endless. And well, I mean, again, you know, when I was doing my research. Um, I mean, it, it was it was ridiculous. You know, there is there is just such a, a, a an endless endless volume of of research that um, highlight that you know physical activity has such a massive benefit. But something that I in- instantly thought to in in my head is that right. So if we're saying we we you know you take in the context of someone that has no exercise whatsoever, right, or a, a ridiculously low level of exercise. Um, they've got something like an office job. They've got really no desire or intention to try and go and go out and do massive things. Well, my my perception, you know, thinking about walking for leisure and all of that, is that right? Well, how can we bring about a very realistic change to to their life? So I started my my research actually started with right. What are the benefits of of walking during the day? So. Um, this uh, this particular study was done by Keith Diaz from the uh, Journal of Medicine and Science and Sports and Exercise, bit of a meaty name, but but it's been done in January twenty three, um, and it was only done on eleven adults. But what they did is they put them basically in a in an ergonomic chair for for eight hours. They weren't allowed to sort of well, they, there was different levels to the study, right? But um, typically when they were there, they were only allowed to get up for a bathroom break. They were allowed to use their phones and stuff like that. Um, but they then had different groups walking or doing different amounts of walking intermittently um, over the course of certain days. And they found that um, the optimal amount of movement um, found within the research that was if you go for a five minute walk every 30 minutes, um, this had a significant impact on lowering both blood sugar and blood pressure. So it also led to significant decreases in fatigue and significant improvements in mood. So even in the context of five minutes, mm. every 30 minutes, standing up, walking around the office, doing whatever, right? That is an accessible form of exercise. And, it, you know, that's where it comes back to what is exercise. It's not, it's not always about, you know, absolute, you know, putting your body through living hell right if that's Mm -hmm. if it's if your starting point is i don't do anything i need to do more five minutes every 30 minutes i mean that's that's an insane and it what that wasn't the i don't think that was the only study that that um 
I mean, it isn't. It's not the only study that highlights those those same factors. I think actually my sister was doing something similar to that. Right. Okay. Yeah. In, in her own research. But, yeah. yeah. So it's it's limited, really, as you say. There's those there's, there's small little windows where you can get up and just move your body, um, or just walking, right? Just walking, and and you know, even be, I'm. I do I do lots of exercise, but actually, I think walking for me is probably one of the most profound because depending on whether you're in an industrialized area or a rural area, um, it, it, it really allows you to, to reconnect with your, your body, your thoughts. It's relieving. It's uh, unburdening in some ways. Um, and it, you know, I think just the, 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 the rolling scenery, um, it just opens up some of those, those areas and those pathways. And, um, yeah, I, I always feel a sense of relief, you know, when, you, when you've gone for a walk. and um, well, you, you take that then up another notch, right? So you've obviously got, you know, five minutes of walking, which is, which is still very um, accessible, but something that probably the large majority of, of people have now got smartphones or smart watches, right? And you have the ability to track the amount of steps that you do in the day. And obviously, you know, on the whole, it's like, oh, okay, can you reach either 10,000 or 20,000 steps in, in a day? And then I, you know, so again, I, I found an, an interest in that. So if we're talking about trying to then step that up another level, so instead of five minutes of walking, maybe intermittently, actually, you know, making a commitment to yourself in the day saying, right, I'm going to hit this this particular step count. Um, taking more, so this was uh, counting steps can reduce disease. So this is um, Josh Denny or Dini. Okay. Um, Denny, I'm going to go for, mm-hmm. and this was in the Journal of Nature Medicine. Um, it says that taking more than 8,200 steps per day was found to protect uh, protect against obesity, um, sleep apnea, um, and major depressive disorder. Um, the data suggests that overweight individuals can reduce their risk of becoming obese by 64% if they increase their daily steps from 6,000 to 11,000. Now, this was based on, you know, 41 to 67-year-olds, I believe. Um, but again, you know, I actually maybe give context to uh, my mum. She recently got given a, one of the, the, the smartphones and things, right? And she was an incredibly active individual when she was younger, but her job was very walking-based and, you know, just just changes in lifestyle and things like that but um she now has this watch and she you know it, you can see the impact that just having a step count has on 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 an individual just having like a, essentially a target to try and hit in the day so you you think of those two levels of involvement and exercise right well can you go for a walk for five minutes every 30 minutes at work you know or can you you know actually form some some form of step count and set yourself a goal in a day and and the again the the impacts are mad mm-hmm. mad mm-hmm. yeah definitely um as you say the accessibility of walking as well um and just to just to reiterate as well that when when we're when we're exercising in it and it and we we gain these benefits that the benefits gained imp- improve the quality of the lens in which we the, you know the way we interface with the world improves um, there's a there's a there's a study here by the British Pharmacological Society, and it talks about the um, benefits of exercise on cognitive function. And I had to demystify this language because <laughs> I didn't know what it meant either. Um, but it enhances neurogenesis and is a catalyst for neuroplasticity. So neurogenesis is new neurons found in the brain, and then neuroplasticity is a process that involves adaptive structural and functional changes to the brain. So essentially you're, you're, you're regenerating, growing, proliferating neurons in the brain. You know, you're, 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 you're weaponizing your brain in some ways, you know, uh, you're, you're giving it the armor that it needs, um, in order to, 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 to tackle and to combat. I don't know why I'm using all these army-based analogies. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay. <laughs> a little bit uh, of a tangent yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, analogies aside, you understand what I'm saying, that, that I think if you, can, if you can sharpen the lens by which you, you see the world, um, it, I think it allows you to, to en- engage with it in a much more impactful way. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> and, <laughs> I, I, mean, I mean, it even goes on to say, that it improves learning and memory, quality of sleep as well. 
uh, and uh, facilitates functional recovery from brain injury and depression. So, you know, when we're talking about happiness as well, what it means to be happy, um, you know, we can we can clear that path to reach that destination, you know, um, it becomes much more achievable when we, when we exercise routinely. Well, link back into the, the, the neurotransmitters, right? You've, it's, it's got to, it's got to increase the, the activity levels of things like, mm-hmm. you know, dopamine or, or serotonin to those sort of feel good chemicals. Mm-hmm. You, you come out of a bout of exercise or, or some form of, of exercise and you just, you instantly feel better. And as you, as you, as you say, you know, I think it then helps you to to review the ways in which you 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 look upon the world. Now, I, I want to sort of take us um, more linked into mental health because in in the grand schemes of things, I, I think people are much more aware of the the physical benefits that that exercise brings yeah, around. Sure. Right, you know, the reduction in in diabetes or um, you know reduces cardiovascular disease risk it can um, reduce the, the impact of the the chances of certain elements of cancer um, it can help you to reduce your cholesterol levels it can help to reduce your blood pressure like again it I, I think we could probably talk for for, for for many many moments of well we could talk for hours about the, the physical impacts of it mm-hmm. but I think because we're you know and obviously there is a sense of happiness that comes from being um, you know physically physically fit physically able but i really want us to lean um into into the impact that it has on on our mental health because mm. i think that you know when we talk about you know prescribing things such as medicine you know instantly we think that that is the the, the initial route. and for for many people and i you know this is about really disclaiming here that i'm in i'm in no professional whatsoever um but that there is there is massive value in in exercise and how that can be you know a really first line of defense when it comes to 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 your mental health and in in the terms of just myself you know talking about how my my approach to exercise has has changed you know i i think i I, when i first started i had this this belief that you know certainly like something like basketball football i'd be able to take it much much further and x y and z right but then just over time you know, elements of reality kicking and stuff like that. But, you know, I I then went through a bit of a tumultuous sort of relationship with the exercise as I went through uni. You know, I learned how to play Ultimate Frisbee and I made some unbelievable friends through that. And that was actually almost the first gateway into enjoying exercise for the purpose of, of just supporting my mental health. Um, and when I then sort of got into into school and I, I just, it, you know, this is where the formation of the, the football for wellbeing sessions for, for serotonin came. You know, I hadn't played football for six, seven, eight years, something like that, you know, for, for like consistently. Um, well, no, not that much probably, but but a, a good a good chunk of time. And we, we set up an after school session with with um, teachers and there was about 12, 13, 14 of us that would go every single week. And the 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 level of impact that that had on our day was insane. It was it was something that we look forward to every single week. And that was literally it's an hour. It's, it's one hour a week. And it wasn't, you know, and then certainly in relation to the football for wellbeing sessions for, for serotonin, it's not about, you know, which team won. It's not about, um, you know, this, this, uh, you know, undue sense of competitiveness. There's, naturally, there's there's a competitiveness in it, but in, in a really positive way, it was actually really more about coming together as a, as a collective, enjoying playing some form of, of physical activity, making new friends, meeting new people. And, you know, when I, when I try and explain why exercise you know why exercise can bring around such happiness in individuals it's, it's, it's not because of the physical or because of the, it's, it's because of all three of them you know you put yourself into certain scenarios you you just have so many opportunities to to just just come out of going oh my word i needed that I needed that. I feel so much better for it. I physically moved my body. I I met new people. I got to speak to people, and then you know, actually, I got that sort of that that positive rush, that positive feeling from 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 exercising. And if there's one thing to take away as a message from from this particular podcast, it is that it's that you don't don't prescribe the idea that exercise has to be this one dimensional. I either am unbelievably good at it or I don't do it. You know, just involvement is 
you just you cannot understate the benefits you cannot understate the benefits and i really try my best to instill that in 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 young people with with some success some some failure but you know never never believe that you can't exercise even if you are someone who has some form of um you know ailment or injury or disability or whatever it might be you know all I recommend that you go and do is go and watch the Paralympic Games. Go and watch uh, just any any of um, sort of the adapted sports, and recognise that anybody can be involved if mm-hmm. they truly want to, and it can have a massive impact on all elements of your life. Yeah. Oh God, man, I can only echo um, that that sentiment. <clears throat> um, it's so true that y- you know participation is key. It truly, truly is. And that sense of just community is is so important. And I guess, you know, when, when this here's another perhaps phase we can go to is whilst exercise can be um, in, in general, very, very essential to life, you know, and it can make us very happy. If you go to the upper end of that spectrum where you're exercising a lot and i've been thinking about this is that you know i think that also deters people from exercising because the the market right now it as a commodity it's been saturated with this is what exercise is it's about looking this way performing performing this way um and i think there's also a quite quite a strong moral element to that as well is that it kind of accompanies those those ideas that if you're not achieving these standards um then shame on you you know and uh, i mean i i can only i can i can only speak for myself and it's it's good to be to be frank and earnest in in that i have taken a very particular trajectory um in my own exercise regimen but every now and then, and this is not who I am, but every now and then I feel those those urges kind of boiling and bubbling beneath me, you know, trying to infiltrate and making very unnecessary judgments about people. Um, and I have to quickly eschew them and say, you know, this isn't, but it, it, it's it's the upper end of the scale, you know, of, of when you exercise a lot and you get into a very rigorous um almost obsessive um relationship with it um you start to develop an unhealthy mindset with regards to other people with regards to yourself um and you know we've got what body dysmorphia which is big as well people never being satisfied with how they look uh it's that that side of the exercise also needs addressing right people are exercising enough and then people exercising too much well, what, are your, what are your thoughts on i no, i i fundamentally agree and i've i've heard some really quite tragic stories of people who would then go on to to using certain uh performance enhancing drugs or they would maybe become more um removed from from their their way of you know social circles or or whatever that might be and i think that the point that you touch on there is this this creation of a standard that when you exercise, you need to meet this certain standard, right? And then, you know, you, you look at that and that the levels of parallels that then exist between your experience of school and then what is presented to you in the public eye is that you've got people in school receiving the, the, the largest amount of attention when they have some form of ability or look or physique or something like that. And then you've got this same premise of of, of existence, sure. and then in in current society, right? That you know you've got basically you know mixture of influences. But again, it's 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 difficult because it's a marketing strategy at the end of the day, right? And you you, you want to celebrate the people that have been able to get themselves into that position because I, I I can assure you that takes an awful lot of commitment and work. And in the right balance, I can really understand it. But you know, it's why certain things like um, initiatives such as like this girl, uh, this girl can who who try and challenge the, the 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 face of certain stereotypes, and why it's so important that there are certain initiatives to to really showcase exercise in in multiple variations. Because at the end of the day, the 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 market of 
selling exercise is going to dominate people's perceptions of whether they should or shouldn't be involved in it because they look a certain way or can do a certain thing or can't do a certain thing um yeah and i i it's i think a, a really important issue to to address and it's why you know the local level um initiatives and opportunities that are given to um given to individuals so there's there's a there's a collective called sport in mind who who do just that they're, they're focused much more on supporting individuals who maybe have some form of mental health issue and i so you know obviously with a pinch of salt but they essentially offer free sessions to get involved in badminton table tennis basketball what x y and z there's there's endless volumes of running clubs for me they're the bits that need to be receiving the the, the largest amount of focus not because it's discrediting the people who are of, of of real talent and real ability but it's the same case of are we actually meeting the masses are we are we showcasing that there is a way to be involved in exercise without you looking like you have spent every waking moment of your existence exercising yeah sure yeah it, it it's it's such a complicated and tenuous issue isn't it and I, I really really actually enjoyed that example you gave about those those very same standards being set in school and then being replicated again you know in in adolescence but i, I th think about it this way like how often do you hear about in local um, local situations right here is a free opportunity to get active you know obviously running clubs a little bit different but let's say a certain sport something that requires maybe some form of activity how how frequently do you is do you see it promoted on a on a social media platform how often do you see it promoted in, in news programs they, they become more of the good news stories rather than the dominating focus you know it's more mm. about it's showing uh, it celebrates that the growth or expansion of certain businesses um, rather than really leaning into what are we doing on a local level to support our community and I'm not discrediting again the, the work of certain councils to, to provide some of those opportunities it's just more about what's being pushed versus you know what is bit what are we being shown as a result of people having money in their hands yeah sure sure and, and, and even to to kind of hop back to the body image side of things is that there is you know we need to we need to exist outside we need to exist exist in a space that's beyond competition and comparison because that is that's a dangerous path to to tow and it will it will ultimately lead to i think ultimately lead to to depression and inferiority um you know and just you feel emasculated right you go into a gym and there's all these huge guys just lifting huge weights and you just don't see the access point there um and again it, it tarnishes the, the the good reputation that exercise should have you know and uh, you think about the, then the link into to social media you know the the endless um sort of comparisons of, of, of you know comparison is the thief of joy right and the in the impact that or the role that social media plays within that and again it's just with with each of these elements it's not about discrediting that you know i'm not then taking away from social media the power that that has but you know further comparisons are then made and then in, you know you talk about people's perceptions of what happened in their pe lessons and um you know this sense of not wanting to be compared in the public eye you perceive that there's this level of comparison going on social media um and then you go into a gym and you sort of get that maybe same sensation from from in there it, it is a really really difficult issue to, to to overcome to 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 show people exercise is just about having a good time it's about it's about keeping your body physically fit keeping your mind mentally fit and to you know create social experiences but it's it's always that classic situation of you can say it over and over but it's not until we we figure out ways in society to to reshuffle and re um reshift the way in which we can view it that 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 we will we'll see seismic change but my opinion is it starts from childhood it's that you've you've we've got to address it in a really really positive way 
and create as many opportunities as possible. And and thankfully, PE is is shifting. You know, still there is some terrible practice. I cannot, I you know, I've come across some just horrendous stuff. Mm-hmm. But there are more people leaning into the power of positivity that exercise um, brings about. And I think that if we can just, it's going to be generational. It's gonna it's gonna take time. Yeah, that's what that's what I know. But I'm hopeful. I'm a hopeful individual. Absolutely. And um, I commend all the practitioners like yourself that are that do have a really genuine interest and are so well intentioned and really want to see those children engage fully and express themselves fully in that art because it is an art. Exercise is an art. You know, you're you're it's 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 astounding really when you think about it all the different ways the human body can can move and and, it, and endure and just it's it's it straddles the space between fragility and extreme durability doesn't it <laughs> yeah you know how can it how could it really be those two things but it is and it's such a and it's so beautiful that we can inhabit these bodies and do these amazing things and as you say if we can encourage that message um it's going to be much more powerful then you can you can get this big or get this fit or look this way. That's like that's a component to it, but it's not the whole piece. So I mean, with with all that in mind, what what's what's currently what's your what's your what does exercise look like to you? My my exercise is you know I'm doing a I'm doing a personal training qualification, so there is an element of of focus within the gym you know truly based upon the premise that i want to be there for for individuals to to create that sense of 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 feeling welcome and 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 address improving physical and mental health in 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 a way that will maybe help fight off certain stereotypes of how you can approach a certain situation whether that's in classes whether that's in 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 the gym um so obviously gym is is a is a massive component of what i'm doing at the moment um and then also you know the involvement in the football for for well-being sessions exercise for me is 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 truly truly about giving myself a break away from the 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 daily elements of my life it is my it's my break away it's my my time for for me and it's my time for just just truly enjoying a process um and forming really really healthy habits and i'm you know despite the fact that my body has in part fallen apart recently. Yeah. Um, but man, I, I, I just, I can't get enough of it. I can't get enough of so it. Do you think as well that, that you know, that the rigor of exercise, the, the challenge, the difficulty um, is something that appeals to some people more than others, or is it something that you can learn to love? Um, it's what it's, it's anything. It's a habit. It's yeah. a habit. So you've got you, and again, you you have got the extremities. You have got the people who are like, I basically want to put my body through everything it humanly can go through to 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 show how far I can push it, right? And I and I respect and I admire those that can do that. I I I understand that to an extent, but you know, I, I it's not necessarily my full approach. It's high risk, it's, yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, but the, the, I ju- I just think that my my whole or my whole ethos around exercise certainly at the moment is just about being involved. Um, I, I I like to show I like to go through progress. You know the gym really does provide that for me. Um, you know when it's in in structured format and that works for me. It doesn't work for everybody. Mm-hmm. But then for example the football is then the example of like I I don't do that to be a better footballer. I do that because I really enjoy playing with a great group of people, meeting new people, and, and just coming out with feeling more energized feeling better from it yeah but, yeah. but for yourself because this is going to we're going to conclude around here i think this is a really nice stopping point okay. but what what is exercise to you um well you know i mean it's it's so many different things it really is um it's as it, for yourself as well that it's a moment of uh solitude that i can just i can be with myself be with my thoughts um, you know, I've really taken a, a strong interest in running recently, and it does exactly that. I have, I, I don't have any headphones. I don't. I, the only thing I'm listening to. I find that incredible. Well, inc- but I suppose it's again. It, it's just. It's just making that shift between what it is you want from that particular practice. You know, if I'm wearing headphones and I'm going out running, then I'm I'm viewing it through 
uh, a different kind of, uh, in the sense that, you know, it's going to be more for, for the benefits of fitness. You know, I'm not, I'm not going out there because I'm in, I'm not saying for, for everybody, no, but I, most no, I people are saying. putting you're headphones saying. on because they're saying, right, this is something I need to do in order to, to, to achieve the outcome. You know, my outcome is, is that I want to get, you know, a stronger cardiovascular system or respiratory system or whatever it might be. So the running is that, whereas running is so much more to me than that. You know, it, it's almost kind of a spiritual practice in a sense. I really deeply connect with, with my body, with, with the, the, in the environment I'm in, whether that's listening to bird song or my footsteps or my breath, um, you know, seeing, noticing things. I think it just sharpens and heightens your awareness as you're going around, you know, and just, um, it's, it's such a meaningful practice to me. Um, and I've actually, and I don't want to inject too much premeditated thought, but I did write, I did write down something for, for this podcast, um, about what exercise means to me. Oh. Are you ready for this? Oh, you're showing me up now. Go on. Oh, well. uh, so exercise functions on three levels to me. One being the surface level, whereby I become stronger, fitter, more flexible, and mobile. Immune support, enhanced cognizance, disease prevention, all of which expands my lens and improves my ability to interact with life. The second function is much deeper and more profound, and perhaps why uh, exercise is more pertinent to my personal pursuits. The stimuli and stress begets challenge. And within that space, a question arises. Can you overcome this? In overcoming, I answer the question, which in turn begs another. What can't you overcome? And from this call and response comes growth and understanding. I'm playing both the role of student and teacher. And as of yet, the call keeps coming. The question itself almost unanswerable, or is it? If so, then there is infinite wisdom to be attained and applied. And thirdly, I do it because I can, because I get to do it. You know, I think that, as I expressed earlier, our bodies are capable of so much, and exercise is just one slice in this giant pie called life. And I just want to enjoy it to its fullest, and just, just. The mere fact of being able to do these things um, in its simplicity, you know, just I get to do it. And that's amazing. That was very well put. That was very well put. And in, in so many regards, I, I so fundamentally agree with what you're... Whilst I was walking too. Is. Whilst you were walking, of course, of course, you know. But you, 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 I don't think there's anything left to say. I think I think you are completely right. I think there is... The main message is there are endless ways in which you can exercise. Endless ways. There is something out there for every single person. I am I am in true belief of that. And then alongside that, there are so many different reasons to exercise that can suit the personality of absolutely anybody. It is except it can be accessible. To, to every single person but as a society we have to continue to do what we can to show as many people as possible that exercise can bring happiness in many different forms truly well we've, we've been speaking for an hour an hour and a quarter it's been it's been a, it's a, a really i mean again we could probably keep on going but we've got to we've got to we've got to rein it in at some point right yeah. and i think it probably justifies a a, a second uh episode sometime down, probably down actually in the, yeah, yeah that's down, a good in idea. The, down in the future but it was it was great just to, to to really explore you know relatively generically but you know really explore elements of of exercise its influence and you know it's nice to get the first episode in the bank it really is no, i know, totally agree can, just to consider all the future episodes that we we can touch on all the the, the other things that can 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 spur some happiness in our lives i think yeah i think we're gonna have a lot of fun yeah and you know i, I really want the, the message from this I, I mean hopefully people will be inspired and can resonate with our stories and and um be informed by the things we've said um but yeah the, the one take is is that that exercise is it can be so powerful and so life-changing um, and will provide you with a measurable amount of happiness if you let it. 
you know don't give up on it don't, don't give, give up, up on, on it. it don't give up on it find find the way in which it's going to it's going to find something that inspires you and find something that that you can uh connect with you know um i promise you i promise you from my own personal experience and i'm sure yours as well i promise you it there will, is something there it, yeah 100%. there is something there for you oh well ladies and gentlemen people of the world hopefully you enjoyed those 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 ramblings and and you know and many more certainly to come. certainly if no one else did i i i oh. truly i truly did but please do let us know you know your your thoughts and, and opinions and, and experiences in the comments it'd be amazing for us to to, to dive into it with with other people and, and really continue to reflect on that journey and please do give this uh, a little like maybe a little uh, subscribe maybe for for the serotonin channel and and just share it as widely as possible you know this is this is the start of a journey for us and I, I really can't wait to go on it dave so thank you so much for joining me today oh thank you it's been an absolute honor a privilege and i've learned a lot big love okay.